So uh, welcome to all of you who are interested in the subject of the uh, commercialization of low energy nuclear reactions. Steve Katinsky and I have been um, working on this subject for several years and we're very pleased with the opportunity to uh, share our perspectives with you. Now, before I get to the subject, I'd like to um, spend a moment talking about Lenria Corporation. A field like LENR needs two kinds of organizations. One is a scientific society and the other is an industrial association. Unfortunately, Bill Collis founded the uh, International Society for Condensed Matter Nuclear uh, Science in 2003, and he and the society have done a remarkable variety of good things for the field, and they're very, very much appreciated. Well, but we didn't have a um, industrial association, so what is that? Well, many of you know industrial associations or groups of people or companies in a particular field, and um, they're organized to promote common interests. Uh, early in the um, life of uh, cold fusion and LENR, uh, the Electric Power Research Institute played a very prominent role in the field and industrial organization, the electric power industry. And there are now thousands of industrial trade and other organizations globally. So uh, Steve and I, uh, thought that we should found LENRIA, which uh, is short for Low Energy Nuclear Reaction Industrial Association, uh, with the goals of advancing uh, the science as well as the business of LENR. We founded the society and um, the uh, association in 2015 to advocate for the support of R&D, and uh, since then uh, have uh, conducted a variety of activities, including the organization of ICCF 21 in Colorado in 2018. So that's who you're hearing from. You're hearing from a couple of people who are interested in the business side of LENR. To get to the uh, subject at hand, commercialization, I uh, show the agenda here. This is a uh, three-part talk. Start out talking about motivations for LENR commercialization and why consider it now. You know, why consider it at all? Why consider it now? Then we'll go into some general uh, overview of commercialization, uh, independent of LENR. What is necessary to be done to bring products to market? And then we'll focus on LENR uh, commercialization for most of the um, uh, ha second half of the talk. So the why, why are we interested in commercialization? There are two kinds of reasons, pull and a push. There's a global need for clean energy as the world's population increases, uh, as the per capita use of energy increases, uh, the countries develop. And then of course, the climate change is real and already a major problem in many places. Uh, you, know, you don't have to think very hard to identify places where you wouldn't want to buy real estate these days, okay? So that's on the pull side, the need side. On the push side, we have the fact that it's possible to release nuclear scale energies, millions of electron volts using energies on a chemical scale of EVs. And that gives the prospect and in fact reality of energy gain, which directly should lead to lower cost energy. Oh, and in addition to that, there's no dangerous prompt radiation. You don't need neutron shielding, no radioactive waste. You don't need to uh, put things in canisters for um, tens and hundreds of thousands of years and no greenhouse gases. Oh, and also it's high energy density. And what that means is that we could have small generators that are distributed you know, in homes. And that of course uh, uh, could have an impact on um, brownouts and blackouts, uh, less cost for the grid and so forth. So there, there are these several motivations for the uh, commercialization of um, NRL. So, so let's summarize the advantages and potential impacts of what we expect eventually, commercial LENR generators. So we have an experimental database, a third of a century of work in laboratories all over the globe that have shown that LENR has serious possible advantages, gain and associated lower, lower energy costs, the lack of the prompt radiation and, and radioactive waste, as well as greenhouse gas, and potentially compact and distributed generators. And some of you are saying, hey, Dave, you just said that on the last graph. Yes, I know. This is really central. If you're interested in LENR, 
you ought to know this and be able to recite it. I expect to uh, teach a course on LENR at our university, hopefully in about a year. And this is one of the things that the students will have to uh, understand, appreciate, and be able to regurgitate on exams in order to pass the course. <laughs> so we have the prospect of lower cost and distributed clean energy that would have many impacts on a variety of uh, size scales, uh, uh, social uh, redistribution of resources and many different improvements. Businesses, we'd have a new global industry based on LENR as well as lower costs for many, many other industries. And individually, we'd have local and lower cost clean energy and also clean water, which I'll get to uh, more in a moment. Now, the realization of these possibilities would require the development of safe, reliable, and cost-effective LENR generators. So one of the reasons we're interested in LENR, there's an opportunity, but it's not gonna happen by itself. It's gonna take a lot, a lot of work. Now, um, 10 years ago already, I uh, published an article in Infinite Energy Magazine that listed the uh, potential advantages of LENR products. And there's no need for me to go through this. Uh, if you want to look at it, you can um, stop the video and look at it. But um, as I mentioned already, I'm particularly interested in the production of clean water, which uh, I will talk to in the following view graph. So of the 7 billion plus people on earth, about a billion lack clean, safe drinking water. And uh, it says worldwide, one out of every five deaths of young children is due to water-related diseases. Okay, you look at the website of the Water Project. It's very interesting. So distributed LENR generators, heat generators that could be used for distillation uh, to provide clean water by either desalination of uh, seawater or cleanup of the um, dirty water from rivers or lakes would be historic in itself. But the health benefits would, would even be historic. I mean, it's a win-win uh, a thing. If we can produce clean water then uh, we'll have two good things, clean water and, and better health for um, millions of people on earth. So I invite you sometime when you run a, a, a glass of water to look at it. It's clear, it's clean, there's nothing in it uh, floating around, uh, you know, no bacteria, it's been purified and fortified sometimes with fluorine. So, um, you know, it's something to celebrate and to uh, motivate us towards the commercialization of uh, LENR to provide clean water. So a short summary of the motivations, climate change is real and requires a new clean energy source. I'll get to that in a moment. The several attractive features of LENR and the giant energy market make LENR a very desirable option for commercialization, for investment, okay? And the reality is that both the scientific research and the commercial development will take time and money as well as motivated people and the necessary tools. So the question in red at the bottom here comes up, will LENR generators be commercialized in time to lessen, to ameliorate uh, climate change? And it's possible that will not happen. I'm of the viewpoint that it's gonna take one or two decades before LENR products are on the market, generators, thermal and electrical generators. And uh, we know the time scale for uh, climate change is um, uh, measured, you know, we wanna have things by 2030, uh, reducing the amount of, um, of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by hopefully both putting less into the atmosphere and also taking it out of the atmosphere. Now, even if LENR does not come along soon enough to cut into climate change, or cut into the carbon dioxide that causes climate change, uh, LENR generators might still play a major role in powering the responses to climate change, such as inland migration. You know, the, the um, large fraction of the population of the world live near the uh, sea. In the uh, US, 10% of the land area is uh, called, neighboring uh, oceans and rivers. And uh, that houses 40% of the population of the United States. So anyway, the prospect of inland migration as sea level rises is a um, very serious thing. And it could be that um, the changes that are induced, resettlements and so forth are going to be uh, powered by uh, LENR. 
So before we leave the first uh, part of the talk, uh, the question is why consider it now? Well, if we have something that's promising and we know it's gonna take a lot of work to do uh, to realize the promise, let's get on with it. And I say again, it takes expertise and time to develop first prototypes and then products. Commercialization requires major sustained investments. That's why I had time and money underlined on the uh, last few graph. And of course, as you know, probably some companies are now trying to develop products based on LANR. And amazingly, some companies have already announced LANR products, but they have yet to become available and tested. Okay, so uh, companies like um, Leonardo Corporation uh, are of great interest because they uh, think they have generators that could be manufactured and sold now, but uh, I don't know of anybody who has actually gotten on them and um, done the necessary testing. So moving from the um, background, if you will, on this presentation to the general uh, overview of commercialization, there are many steps required, and, and that's true even if the science is understood. But of course, that's not the case with LNR. We still do not have an adequate understanding of the uh, physics and chemistry that's going on, and in biology in some cases. So I listed here in a um, article published in 2015 the 18 steps that are required for um, the development of products from the uh, concept at the beginning to um, end of life considerations, recycling of uh, materials at, at the end. And again, there's no need for me to go through this. I would like to um, emphasize uh, items 11 and 12 in this list, in-house or alpha testing by the developing company, and then out of house, that is early adopter and um, third party uh, so-called beta testing. So when you back off a of look thing, it's possible the commercial LENR generators will be on the market in a few years. Possible, but not guaranteed. And my expectation is it'll uh, come somewhere in the uh, 10 to 20 year time frame. And um, I've been wrong many times before. I'd be happy to be wrong in this case, but uh, that's the way it looks to me right now, given everything that has to be done, uh, both in research and in uh, development. Now, there are three major phases for commercialization and I work backwards. The final stage is the actual product development. It's complex and challenging, many steps, and they offer many ways to fail, <laughs> okay? It's, it's, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. Now, in order to make a product, it's necessary to have prototypes, something that works, that uh, is not a laboratory experiment, but it looks more like a product and the development and testing of prototypes is what we call the pre-commercialization phase. And to get to that, you need data for the prototype development. So it's usually necessary to perform focused engineering R&D, not ordinary scientific research, you know, that's aimed at um, learning things. Uh, this is goal-oriented oriented, R&D to produce the information that's needed for the um, prototype development during the uh, pre-commercialization phases. Now, I'm gonna pause in the story here to introduce and talk about the concept of technology readiness level. Some of you have probably heard of it. If you haven't, uh, I, I, we think it's important so that uh, that's why we are including it in this presentation. What are TRLs? The answer is they're numerical measures of the ready, readiness of technologies that have been widely developed and used. And um, uh, there are different TRL scales in the United States, the uh, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the Department of Defense have theirs, and the European Union also has a, a scale of TRLs. Now, recently, Steve Katinsky uh, used those as a basis to develop, to develop a set of TRLs that are appropriate for commercialization of LENR. And I'll get to that in a moment. So those TRLs, permit clear identification of the research and development, pre-commercialization and commercialization stages for LANR. So this is what Steve came up with. You see it's from TRL zero to TRL nine. And um, this starts with the idea, the basic principles, technology goes up through uh, uh, full-scale demonstration and, and uh, commercial availability. And you notice there are three colors 
on the arc of the TRLs. And that's because they match up to the three phase, phases for commercialization that I just introduced. The first uh, five, zero through four, are in the um, R&D phase, uh, TRL five and six, pre-commercialization, and then, then full commercialization, ready for sale with all of the other requirements. Uh, it falls in TRL stages seven, uh, eight, and nine. So th this is a, um, a useful way for us to communicate the readiness. And uh, you know, uh, the uh, TRL of LA and R is still in the early phases. Now, I'm sorry for the, so many words on this view graph, but um, I wanted to talk about uh, turning now to LA and R commercialization, a few points and the requirements associated with them. So they go together so they're on the same graphic. First point is that the engineering of systems such as LENR generators is a complex mix of things, mechanical, electrical, fluidic, thermal materials, many other factors. The good news is that there are many modern software tools available for uh, geometrical and material design of modules and systems. So it's, and it's also possible to use them to simulate the performance of complex systems, which contain many types of energy. The point of those uh, the second and third bullets there is that it's not necessary to do everything um, in the lab or in the shop by trial and error. You can do a great deal now with computer design and computer simulation. So it, it's better than it used to be, but nevertheless, the design and manufacture of LENR generators uh, is in a very early stage and many advances are needed and um, I believe will be made that um, you know, just as uh, other technologies ranging from uh, integrated circuits to cell phones have uh, come a long way by virtue of uh, good engineering, I think that the same is going to happen uh, with uh, LNR generators because the motivation is so strong. Listed to the bottom are some requirements. The performance and the longevity of LNR materials are both critical and they can only be determined by experiments. My background is in materials. I'm very aware that the Japanese and others have uh, gotten very, very good results in LENR experiments using nanomaterials. Okay, but diffusion, especially at elevated temperatures, 200 degrees, 300 degrees C, all the way up to 1000 degrees C, diffusion is relentless. Will it destroy the efficacy of LENR materials? Uh, if so, do they have to be replaced or can they be renewed in place? Many questions about materials that challenge all of us with an interest in commercialization. Obviously the reproducibility and controllability have to be assured and demonstrated by a lot of testing and commercial LENR generators have to be very reliable and have the ability for the reactions to be turned on, turned up, hell level, turned down, off, whatever the operator or the uh, controller uh, desires. And, um, and I, I use the automobile as an example. If um, we got in the car and it did whatever it wanted, uh, it wouldn't be useful. And we need the same kind of control that we have in an automobile when we uh, have LENR generators. Now, money is a problem. And here are some arguments for much greater investment in research and commercial, commercialization of LENR. And um, one of them is the size of the energy industry. Uh, the global energy industry is now over $1 trillion a year. Uh, the um, reference at the bottom actually says 1.4 trillion. So if there were an investment of $100 million annual, annually in LENR, which by the way is much, much less than is going into hot fusion, I, I'll interrupt the sentence. In the last few years, over $2 billion uh, uh, private money has been um, uh, invested in uh, hot fusion, and uh, that doesn't count government money. Okay, it, it's remarkable uh, how much money is going to hot fusion. So anyway, back, back to the um, LNR situation, the 100 million, 10 to the eighth dollars, compares with a trillion, 10 to the 12th dollars, it's only um, uh, 10 to the minus four or 0.01%. So a minuscule investment on the scale of the global energy uh, turnover uh, in, L in LNR uh, would seem to be very uh, prudent given all the promise of LNR. 
all the challenges, okay? So um, that small fraction might lead to new energy sources that have high gain. And as I said, that means the energy would be much cheaper. Oh, and also are clean and safe and small and distributed. Okay, so um, th there's a very, very strong case for uh, investment in LENR. Now, one, one of the um, related arguments is that increasing the investment will increase the rate of knowledge acquisition. Uh, called knowledge K, so delta K per delta time, will shorten the time to market for LENR. So the, um, the, this uh, schematic graph here shows the uh, TRL vertically and time, years horizontally. So we're at, at some low TRL level now for LENR. And if we have a high rate of investment, which is to say a high rate of learning, we can get TRLs that are appropriate for manufacturing sooner rather than later. And the difference could be years, you know, two years, five years, 10 years. Okay, so the point is the rate of learning, the DK, DT, Delta K, Delta T, depends on the rate of investments. If you wanna read more about this, um, there are a couple of articles that Steve and I wrote the reference to the bottom there. And uh, this uh, concept of uh, the rate of, um, of learning rate of knowledge acquisition was introduced by Steve in that um, article three years ago. Okay, so um, we, we have to pay attention to everything involved. It's like a chain. If any link is missing, then we're out of business. And commercialization means that safety and reliability have to be assured. If products are not both safe and reliable, they're not gonna make it on the market. You know, if, if you know something's gonna blow up, or uh, fail in three weeks or uh, any other problem, cost too much, you know, you're not gonna buy it. Regulatory approval has been long recognized as a uh, critical wicket and um, uh, government jurisdictions at uh, national, state and local levels are all interested, especially because of the word nuclear, okay? So that's gonna get a lot of attention. And finally, Consumer acceptance uh, has to be there. It, it, you know, it's possible that uh, consumers will fear local nuclear energy. And I am of the opinion that as uh, LENR products come to market, it's gonna be critical for the, uh, the uh, PR, the public relations of the LENR, nascent LENR industry to really handle that uh, skillfully. I, I mentioned in passing, passing Beside uh, things like uh, the reliability, we have um, an, uh, other illities associated with commercial products, and I, I list them there and give a reference to them. But there are a lot of things to pay attention to for the commercialization of LENR. One of them is testing. Testing is doubly important. The people who make things test them to see if they work, and the people who buy things test them to see if they uh, are uh, what they're said to be, if they meet the specs. So performance and other testing links design and manufacture on one hand to diverse applications. I um, give a lecture on testing at our university every year in a uh, engineering course. And uh, it's uh, something I could go on and on about, but uh, suffice it to say that testing is gonna play a big role in the uh, uh, development and uh, commercialization of LENR. Now, there's a viewpoint that Dana Seckholm introduced to the field in a very nice talk at uh, ICCF 21 in 2018. The title of his uh, presentation is at the bottom, Experience with Semiconductor Technology Development Potentially Relevant to LENR. And he, he was uh, somewhat humble when he says potentially relevant. It's very relevant. So he had two points. Uh, I won't read all of the words, but at the top it says, if funding of LENR development were adequate, it would be possible to use the iterative focused practice from the mass of semiconductor industry to speed the knowledge commercialization and exploitation of LENR. Now, let, let, let us count the number of people in the uh, LENR community who are um, uh, experienced in the semiconductor industry and ready, willing, and able to bring that uh, to bear. Uh, one, that's Dana. I don't know of anybody else. I mean, I've got a lot of experience with semiconductors, but I don't have the in-house 
uh, under the gun, production oriented experience that uh, a guy like Dana has. So that's something to consider. And then on the materials front, Dana wrote systematic parameter variation experiments with diverse materials using robust experimental setups with multiple monitors and serious data analysis would require team efforts and significant funding. Back to the money issue. I'm nearing the end. I uh, thought late when we were putting this presentation together that it's probably worthwhile to point out a couple of uh, LENR companies to watch. One of them is the uh, company Bruan Energy Corporation, uh, Robert Godis and his colleagues in um, California. And the other is uh, Clean Planet in Japan, uh, led by uh, Hideki uh, Yoshino. And I uh, recommend that you watch these two companies. They're doing some very important work that could uh, be uh, the leading uh, work on commercialization. Uh, you know, they, they don't talk in terms of competition, but they're both trying to uh, reach the same goal, namely the commercialized uh, commercialization of uh, LENR. So you can, you can keep an eye on them. I'm getting near the end. This is the second to last um, graphic to summarize the current status. Scientific advances are critical to all aspects of the field. If someone comes forward with the understanding of LENR, the mechanistic, physical, and chemical understanding uh, that um, we all want, which um, could happen anytime, okay, and it stands up to the criticism of the rest of the LENR community and the broader scientific community, then commercialization is going to be better. You know, it, it, it's nice to know what you're dealing with, <laughs> okay. Uh, present engineering is in an early stage of development and still uh, relatively crude. There are exceptions, but in general, that's the case. And currently, uh, business on a large scale, numbers of units and uh, the, the money involved has not really begun. So the current bottom line for LENR is that generators of heat and electricity are really promising. And the current global excitement is understandable. You know, it's fortunate it's there. It's unfortunate that it's not broader. And hopefully ICCF24 will contribute to the broadening of interest in the field. And the reality is there are many steps that must all be made to work for LENR to be widely used and have dramatic impacts. So to end up, I have a, um, a, a simple summary of the points that I made. We have two drivers for the commercialization of LENR the pull by the need and the push by the promising features of the technology, a lot of potential advantages and potential major impacts. There are a lot of realities. They're listed here. I don't have to read through them again, but um, each one of them requires attention. You know, we're not, as a community, going to get off by finessing any one of those. A much greater investment on all phases from the lowest TRL levels to the highest are urgently needed. Uh, we have to exploit the experience from semiconductor and other industries, take advantage of what they know about commercialization. And we need both uh, perspective and patience, okay? So I'm at a point in life where um, I've already resigned myself to not living long enough to go down to the hardware store and buy an LENR, LENR generator. I am hopeful, however, though, that while I'm still around, I will... Uh, be able to uh, read papers by uh, uh, bright people uh, on uh, how LENR works, you know, get the actual theory and the tests and everything that's necessary for understanding. I look uh, down a generation, our um, children may be able to go to the hardware store and buy an LENR generator during their life. And our grandchildren may be in a situation where during their life, uh, the use of LENR power is to them what cell phones have been to us. So it's just part of the fabric of society. And uh, that's a, um, an optimistic hope. I plead guilty to being optimistic, but um, there's a uh, tremendous uh, force for the uh, successful commercialization of LNR. So um, Steve and I put our um, emails on the first graphic, the title graphic in this, uh, presentation. If you want to get in touch with us, we'd be happy to, um, uh, to interact with you. And for the moment, let me, uh, on behalf of Steve and myself, thank you for your attention. I hope uh, 
you find this to be a, a fascinating subject with a great promise. Thank you very much.